We are four down, which brings us to the best named fold, but my personal least favorite to draw, we are on the diaper fold. So this is diaper folds. Um, diaper folds are used in various things from drapery studies, kind of like you can see here on these diagrams. Um, it's also just kind of used in any kind of free flowing fabric, like robes or anything like that, where you're gonna have a really nice draped effect that comes off of the clothes. So why do I not like diaper folds? Well, for me, diaper folds just kind of remind me of the beginning days of art school where everything was traditional, 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 and it was like the first time really learning how to handle charcoal and making these things over and over and over for an entire semester will drive you crazy. <laughs> that being said, um, it is, as much as this pains me to say, a really important study to undertake because it's one of the foundations of not only learning charcoal and learning how to shade and tone and value, um, and also just kind of learning how fabric naturally folds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just a, a foundational skill that is going to help you to understand how to dress your figures or anything that involves fabric throughout any of the practices you do, whether it's cartoony or realistic drawing. So, simply put, diaper folds are when you have some sort of fabric, square shaped, it can be in the form of a triangle as well. And what you're gonna do is pin it into two points, right? So you can see these are pinned into the wall. Um, this person is holding and pinching here. And what's happening is the fabric is being pressed inwards on itself. So it's essentially collapsing in the middle. So where you have a normal square piece of fabric, like say a, a washcloth or something in your kitchen. And then if you were to put two pins in it and push it together a little closer, so now we have two pins that are closer together. This part of the fabric here is going to collapse downward. So now you're gonna get something that kind of looks in the realm of something like this here. Okay, so the fabric is pressing down now onto itself because the fabric has to come together. It's not being held tightly anymore like this example right here it's falling together, the fabric is being pushed towards each other. So you might be wondering then, what did that intro video have anything to do with then if this only involves uh, fabric on a wall? Well, it doesn't really only involve fabric on a wall. The whole point of learning these draperies is to understand that two points of tension where fabric is coming together is gonna to create this. So if I bring up that intro picture again, you can kind of see that exactly what you have going on right here is happening right here where you see this big, fold like this, the cloth is coming together, and you have that diaper fold. And then you have a bunch of these smaller diaper fold folds happening right up here as well. So naturally, while these do occur, obviously, in drapery studies, naturally, um, we do see it in clothing, particularly nice flowy clothing like robes, sometimes dresses, depends on the outfit, right? but we do want to understand this because this is one of the easiest ways to really give a character nice classic kind of elegance or if you were to be drawing you know maybe some sort of renaissance clothing or ancient greek kind of clothing where they really wear those nice robes especially people of royalty or power this is something that you're going to want predominantly taking over your character's clothing style. Now, going back to this drapery study reference just for a second here, I do wanna point out a couple things. We know what's going on in this, right? So essentially we have two points. And again, this kind of demonstrates too that these two points don't have to be on the same height. They can be lower. And all that's gonna do is just further dictate how far down and which part this is bending towards, right? So you have a little more of a bend going this way and this is a little more straight down just because there is less point of gravity from here to here than from there to there. But enough of the physics lessons. What I wanted to also show is that in this, we have what we call the pipe folds, which we've already gone over, right? So we're already professionals at this. So because of this point of tension, what's happening here is that you are getting these really nice pipe folds 
coming through and you'll see them sometimes a lot more you know it still goes down and can make some pipe holes as well all the way at the bottom um, so in a lot of the examples we will see pipe folds so just again I just kind of wanted to call that out so you guys knew what you're seeing you already know this stuff we've talked about it in the previous videos but where we're focusing today is going to be right here at the tension points and what is happening in between those tension points essentially right here this is part of the diaper fold because how this is pulling down is affecting what's going on right here so we will be drawing most of it but the detail that we're going to be focusing on is how the fabric right here collapses where it kind of creates that point and then everything that's going on around it and in between it and that nice kind of dropped point that it gets right below it as well all right while drapery studies give me nightmares of my beginning times in art school i would be a really bad art teacher if i didn't start this with a drapery study it is the classic way to look at diaper folds and it's really going to help you understand what's going on when you put it on clothes because here we just have two direct and obvious points of tension which is where everything is generating from, right? So you should be able to see that and kind of figure that point out. And then this is the diaper fold that we're gonna be drawing right now together, right in here. And what I was talking about with that drop, so you have where it catches the light here, right? All that light. And then it creates this nice shadow bend right here where that fabric just kind of finally gathers together. And sometimes you'll get a little residual fold all the way down at the bottom as well. So let's take our time with this. Remember guys, nice, big, simple shapes. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the details of it. Nice quick sh shading job. We have a really light fabric here with them, pretty solid shadows on it. So should be a quick job. So first things first, we're gonna do the setup here. So usually this thing is hanging from two pins or you know maybe someone's holding it. But here in our drapery study, we have it hanging off of some sort of frame. So I thought, you know, why not draw that in? It's just a rectangle shape, so in a quick rectangle and now we're gonna block in so remember when you're blocking these shapes in you want to go for the big masses first look for the really big shapes and then you can come back and you can totally knock in those smaller little detailed folds and stuff like that I know it's really hard I do it all the time myself but really try to look past the small details get the big shape in there first and then the small details are gonna look so much more clear and they're gonna make so much more sense on your page when you do get to them. Okay, so thinking about weight here. So remember you have two points of tension at the top where you see those two red arrows on the picture and everything is just draping down from those, right? So we have the pipe folds, a lot of pipe folds on the right. So we're used to that. So we can knock in some of those So just kind of getting the general idea of the drawing in here first. So this is a drapery study, right? You always want to start with your big shape. Ideally, you'd be working on some sort of tone paper too, or you'd give your whole picture some sort of a tone. Um, yada, yada, yada. We're not going full art school <laughs> uh, drapery study here. We're just focusing on what we need to focus on, which is our diaper fold. So we're gonna figure out where some of these folds here are generating. This one here is going to be leading to one of our diaper folds. So we kind of want that big point of tension. It's one of our biggest shadow shapes in there. So block that in. And then we can come in and go up to our shadow shape here. So while I'm going through some of the details here, um, I do want to apologize if these videos are running a little quick for you guys. Um, I do try to keep these videos under 30 minutes, so that's the reason why. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but sometimes subjects like this, it gets a little detailed. And, you know, I don't want to skimp on the detail for you guys. I want to give you the, the five drawings so you can really see an example of what's going on. All right, so now we're going to start working in our diaper fold. So we want to think about what's going on with the fabric here, right? So this is probably some sort of cloth, um, maybe a tablecloth, whatever it is, right? And it's probably folded over on itself too. This isn't just, you know, like a one sheet thing. This is folded over at least once. So you have some dimension here. You have a lot of folds going on where that fabric is bending. 
The fabric is not just a clean swoop. It's not a scoop neck, right? This isn't a t-shirt. It has bend and points of bending to it, right? So it's almost a little squared off. You wanna kinda add that in there. It adds a little bit of dimension to your drawing. And then here, once we got these shapes in, we're just kinda thinking of the underhanging tonal shapes here. <clears throat> you can represent these things with just line if you like. Um, but again, you know, if you guys have been watching these videos for a while, I've said this countless times now, but folds are really, really, really created and created more beautifully when you create them with tones and highlights and shadows rather than just kind of drawing in a line. So you guys can kind of see that even with this really, really quick and dirty shading job that I end up doing here, um, it just represents the idea of the picture a little more clear than if I just left it as a line drawing. So we're just gonna toss in a little more shade and detail here. This isn't the most prominent of a diaper fold here and we're gonna have better examples coming up. So what we're gonna do now is we've done our drapery study. Let's take a look at how this looks on some clothes. So moving on. All right, now that we moved on from the mandatory, I didn't wanna get kicked out of the Art Teachers Association picture, we can move on to a little more interesting of studies. Um, just kind of want to basically explain this a little bit just because this could be a little confusing to some people. There is two points of tension that you might think are the two points, but actually because you have this fabric holding that tension, you can follow that line down and then this goes back to here. This is actually the second point of tension for the diaper fold that we see in this particular item. So right here, is our diaper fold happening. You can see it creating that bottom lock here. And then of course, coming off of this is all our pipe folds that we've been seeing, right? So you have a whole bunch of interlocking kind of diaper folds going on down here. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on. Since I went into detail on our last picture, I'm kind of hoping you guys picked up on how to shade and stuff pipe folds. I'm mainly gonna be focusing on here. But again, I will do the big general shapes, so. If you guys would like to take these drawings further, please by all means go ahead. But again, just since this is a diaper fold focus video, I do want to focus on the topic at hand. If you guys have been following my videos for a while, you know everything I just said right there at the end is a complete lie. I always go way overboard with details there. So um, sorry if you guys do really just tune into this just for specific folds like that. But I hope that some of you guys do appreciate that. I just can't help myself when there's detail, there's detail. I'm gonna draw the drawing, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, I am kind of just going and giving myself a really basic mannequin shape here. So I can clearly see it's a female mannequin. We're looking at a dress here. Um, so I just kind of want to think of general shape. So, you know, they base these mannequins off of uh, just kind of like the, I'm doing air quotes here, ideal um, hourglass kind of female shape, right? So that's what I put down. And now I'm just gonna clothe my mannequin here. So we're really thinking about for this one is that you have a piece of fabric that is going from the shoulder, draping down towards the stomach, and then hooking back up at the waist, right? So that is gonna be the two fabric tension points there. Yes, there's another piece of fabric up on the other shoulder, but it's not connected to the, fold, to the, to the fabric that we're getting the diaper fold from. So here I'm in and drawing the diaper fold. This one has a lot of folds going on down here. So it's really easy to get confused. Um, you're gonna see me make a little bit of corrections here later on too. I, I got confused drawing this. Um, there's just a lot of shadow shapes, a lot of highlights, a lot of, I mean, I almost wanna call them wrinkles. It just looks kind of wrinkly there at the bottom, but I think it's just the, the type of material. It's really just that kind of flowy-ish draping kind of fabric. Um, something I did think that was really interesting from this, and you're gonna see this a lot when you see these kind of draped diaper folds on clothing, is that the point of where it meets there between the two tension points, right? So where the diaper fold compresses, it's nice and pointy, right? You kind of almost have like a sharp edge there. So I thought that was interesting. It added a little bit of interest and a little dynamic to my picture. 
So what I'm working on now does not really pertain to the diaper fold exactly, but it is a good talking point. Um, we do want to remember that when we're drawing things, because this is a workshop that's based on, well, drawing clothes on figures. We do want to remember that we're drawing over volume and we're drawing over mass, right? So if there is a plane change, like in the chest of a female, right? We want to be able to show that, that there's more light hitting the top, less light hitting the bottom. How does the fabric drape off of that, right? what different types of materials look different when they do drape off of that or when they drape off of the hips or the stomach you know like it all depends where the dress is like cinched together um all those things matter right so here i'm blocking in my shapes again i'm trying to be good and ignore my tiny little details as best i can and draw in the big picture and then go to the fun details after <clears throat> Here essentially we've already accomplished our diaper fold again i'm just going to take this a step further i'm going to throw a whole tone on this thing i just couldn't help myself from not doing that because it, it is a gray dress right um so i'm already drawing with a gray utensil so i just kind of come in after i fiddle around with doing these shades a little bit and <clears throat> i just throw a tone on the whole thing i couldn't couldn't resist here i go locking it in if you guys do have any intention of doing shading and tone and messing with highlights and stuff, I highly, highly, highly recommend throwing a tone over your picture, just like I did, and then coming in and playing with the shadows. It's so much easier to work from a middle tone than it is to build up values from white. Um, and you're gonna feel like you have something more solid on your paper too. So this works for anything from graphite to charcoal to even paint and stuff like that too. Um, if you guys' intention right now is to maybe work a little better on your shading and tones and stuff like that, give it a try. Give it a try just kind of going straight over with a, like a nice kind of middle gray tone and then seeing if you can work from there. Erase in your highlights, darken in your shadows. All right, so we have a lot going on in this picture, but let's try to keep it simple, break it down. Let's think beyond the human on this one a little bit, because I know this one can kind of seem a little heavy if we're taking on a couple challenges at the same time here. But we have our two points of tension clearly right here. So this is essentially a drapery study on a, pu on a person, right? Um, you have your diaper fold coming through right here with that underlocking shape right there. Creates another small one right underneath. Um, you can even technically call this one a diaper from the side. So instead of drawing in all of these folds going down, all these pipe folds and drop folds, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to focus mainly on this area right here in particular. And we'll just kind of give ourselves a oval torso shape to work off of. All right, so we wanna remember that, you know, this is figure drawing overall, right? So we're putting clothes on our figures. So the element of drawing a figure always comes back into play here. So um, you're gonna see in this drawing as well as the next drawing coming um, and the last drawing too, actually, so that I just kind of do really quick, uh, I wouldn't even call it gesture drawing, which is a really quick figure in there. And then I start placing my fabric on top of it. It's not meant to be anatomically accurate or anything like that, really. I really just need, mm, kind of like the, the last picture we did, I just need a mannequin to throw it on top of. So it doesn't have to be 100% her, but I need something similar. So here I'm going in and drawing in my diaper fold. Now I drew in my two points of tension, which are just below the back of the shoulder, right? That's where the dress is hanging down. And you have the kind of real classical a diaper fold there being created where you have those two points joining and then you have that scoop of fabric underneath which right there I'm gonna draw in get rid of a little bit of that distraction there which is just the body that I was drawing in <clears throat> and there you go and so now I'm kind of looking in over analyzing and seeing too many folds and I will say I definitely go into a little too much detail here where folds I don't need to um, but this is just kind of me playing around. The overall diaper fold is right there and achieved. It's right below that line of the back. And I'm just kind of throwing in some shadow tones to represent it a little more. And I'm going to catch a little more of that rim of highlight there. There we go. 
So, you know, I know this isn't a video about tone shadow, but I'm talking about a lot. If you just kind of draw a little bit of that light on the rim, you're going to have a really nice, realistic looking fold of fabric where it catches the light and then it goes into darkness. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of create the rest. So we do have a little, uh, like I like to call them residual diaper folds because it's just right below the first diaper fold. So you have a little one right underneath there. And then you can kind of just draw in the rest of that drapery study, however you like. Again, I wasn't really focusing on it. It's a super cool dress, but I really just wanted to focus on the diaper fold in this instance here. Sorry, this picture is a little dark with the lighting, but um, I wanted to choose this because I want us to remember too that different types of fabrics will create different kinds of folds, right? So it's still a diaper fold but we have a really thin kind of, um, I'm gonna assume like a silkyish material. So you can see that we have a diaper fold right here, but it's actually falling nice and flat against itself. So it's not such a thick cloth, um, like maybe some of the more cotton or wool kind of blend uh, fabrics that we were looking at before, especially in that drapery study we did in the first one. So we have fabric here that's kind of collapsing on itself. That doesn't mean that we do not see the diaper fold. It's still the same fold principle, right? Where you have the tension points and this is coming down and folding in between those tension points, just like so. You even have the same diaper fold right here in the next drapery that's on the outfit, which is coming right down here, just like so. And it's creating everything just like normal right there. And again, you can even start finding them over here when you really go for it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the first one here, but this is a really cool outfit. So if you do wanna take it a step further, I definitely would not be mad if you guys paused this video, created the full drawing and showed me that one either. Okay, so here we're gonna have a little more quick and dirty Josh figure drawing here where I'm just kind of, I'm, I don't know, I'm barely even thinking about what's going on in the dirt. You're gonna see me draw some things, erase some things. Um, it's all just kind of me trying to figure out um, what information I need for what I'm trying to show you guys. But I do want to leave it in there because I just want to show that, you know, I don't always get everything correct the first time I draw it. I don't think anyone really does unless you've drawn something, you know, over a hundred times and then you're really good at drawing that one specific thing. All right, so that being said, I am getting my object here, right? So in this case, it is a leg. And now we are drawing our folds coming off of that tension point. So here I'm finding the two tension points, which is the leg. So we got one side of the hip and the other side uh, where the leg is kind of going forward. And then that fabric is draping down and it's really folding over itself quite nicely and together, you know, it's not, it's not draping forward towards us like we've seen in a couple examples. It's kind of compressed together. It's almost a drop fold in a way, but we know it's a diaper fold because you have two lengths of fabric compressed together, right? And the rest of this is just gonna be kind of gravy here. If you guys want again uh, to draw those other folds that you see in there, again, feel free. I would love to see those drawings. I think this is a really cool picture, right? So cool picture, cool dress. Um, it's hard for me to stop myself from drawing these whole things sometimes. So I don't blame you if you keep going. All right, so we're just gonna throw in a little bit of tone and stuff here and complete it up. All right, guys, we made it to the last one of this video. So I wanted this one to be pretty obvious for you guys. Here we have something that I would consider more of an ancient kind of Greek look, right? Where they wear those nice big draping robes over each other. Um, so clearly you have your two points of tension right there I'm using blue instead of red because red wouldn't show up on this, right? And we have our nice big diaper fold classically right there. I mean, you can see there's even another big one right here as well. But I thought this is the last one. We should definitely challenge ourselves a little bit. And we've been looking at these pretty straight on for the most part too. This one is a little bit of a side view, but it's still kind of straight on. So how could we challenge ourselves a little bit on this one? So what if we took the same dress and moved it to the side? So again, remember, folds exist in all different angles, all different planes, right? This dress that we were just looking at from more of a back view was giving us diaper folds. Um, so understandably, you have your points of tension here and here still. And right here, we are being given this diaper fold action right here. 
as well. And you can see it drapes down into another and even further down into another. This is kind of a perfect example. We don't always want to think of things as one plane. Um, you know, it might be easy for some of you guys to understand the diaper fold from the drapery standpoint. But what if you were looking at that drapery from the side? It's gonna be vastly different, right? We gotta explore all these different angles. So here it is, this is gonna be the challenge. Let's take it on. And we're gonna draw this last diaper fold from the side. All right, so anyone who is interested in anything like Star Wars or drawing Star Wars or even like Harry Potter and stuff like that, any fandom or any sort of uh, creation where you are drawing characters who have flowy robes with giant hoods on them, this is something that you want to be able to draw. So this is definitely important. So here comes a little bit of my interesting figure drawing where... I left in my fix again, guys. I'm, I'm trying to be transparent here, so this isn't gonna stick. I'm gonna fix that back a little bit. But anyways, um, again, you know, I, I'm just thinking of the body as a mannequin, but having figure drawing skills and knowing what's going on underneath is really, really, really important in understanding your folds. So please check out some of my figure drawing videos if you haven't already. But anyways, here I am just kind of finding that shoulder shape because that's the two points of tension, right? We have the right and left shoulder. Um, we have the right shoulder facing us and then it's draping back and over to the left shoulder. Okay, so quick and dirty, just kind of fixing that up, that bottom area a little bit. Don't really care what the leg's doing because we don't really, the fabric isn't affected by the leg here. So I just kind of want to draw in something rough. Okay, that's good. Push that back. That's not the focus of this picture, right? We got to focus on some clothes. Get your act together, Josh. All right, so now we're coming in. <clears throat> Let's finally draw that diaper fold, you know, the whole point of the video. And we're going to draw the length of it, and then I'm going to come back and find the other point of tension. I always want to draw what's closest to me first. Um, just kind of a force of habit so that it helps me to create depth so I can kind of think about how far away the object in the back is, if I want to exaggerate it, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So drew that in. And so now that I have this one as a base, kind of, all the others, if you look, they look pretty much the same. They might just be a little smaller, maybe at a little more of an angle. So really all I have to do is copy and paste essentially, right? Um, I was comparing how far out those folds go. Um, so I noticed that this, the second one goes about as far out as the first one on top. And then they start to tuck under the body a little bit, under the folds. They start to come a little bit closer to the legs. So this one I tucked in a little further. Again, you're just kind of drawing like a nice big scoop shape. Remember, it's just fabric that is being compressed together. That's all it is. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Where this drawing is right now is 100% acceptable. Here, I'm gonna go ahead in and draw in some of the shade that I'm seeing on this picture. This is again, an example that I would typically throw in a full tone on, but I was trying to avoid that um, just cause I didn't, I don't know where you guys are at with something like that. So I don't wanna overdo it, but here I'm just kind of throwing in tone where I see some strong shadow shapes, right? Um, just to kind of emphasize a little bit more of what's going on with those folds and kind of show it playing with the body a little bit here as well. So once I feel accomplished with these diaper folds here, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of the rest of the dress, which I mean, I mean, how could I avoid that, right? It's super simple. It's literally just a diagonal line that goes all the way down and then connects to the bottom there. Um, and as you guys can see, this could literally be, I could just start calling this like a Star Wars picture or a Harry Potter picture. All I have to do is start putting logos or something on the robe and it would change it all up, right? We made it to the end, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit more of a complicated video than the last one, um, but I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope it didn't go too quick, but again, you know, YouTube, so you can watch it over and over, right? Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for videos in the future, as always, please let me know and I will make those happen. 
Thanks again for watching and have a great day.